What is up, my loveliest free melons? Thank you for joining me here on the Free Melon Society once again. Today we are going to be sharing with you another experiment in testing my blood sugar after an enormous and outrageously massive meal of fruit only. Again, I do this in direct opposition of the completely erroneous misconception that fruit sugar is what causes illness and sickness and uh, diabetes. Right? It has nothing to do with this. Blood sugar is perfectly, perfectly safe. Uh, it's perfectly natural, perfectly healthy. And, uh, you know, we, we cannot stop until this outrageous and damaging misconception uh, about fruit sugar, natural fruit sugar, and health is, is squashed. That whole low-carb community, the paleo community, the outrageous carnivore community, you know, all, all spreading these lies that fruit should be avoided because of its high sugar content. Well, I am now officially past the three-year mark of eating primarily fruit, like 99% fruit. Very rarely do I do little food experiments here and there, uh, vegetables very rarely, um, nuts and seeds uh, even less rare <laughs> than vegetables uh, that I will do. In fact, I just did a little uh, nut experiment for the purpose of sharing information with you guys. So uh, that's that's another lecture. But yeah, 99% fruit, okay? So for this blood sugar experiment, I decided that I would take an absolutely unreasonable amount of grapes, a massive elephantine quantity of grapes, and, and eat all of them or as many as I possibly could, uh, and then measure my blood sugar after uh, one hour after the meal and then two hours after the meal. Don't ask me, you know, what is the exact weight of all the grapes that you eat? I don't know. I don't know what the exact weight of the grapes, uh, the amount of grapes that I ate is. Um, I took a picture of the huge bowl that I, that I ate out of. Here it is. I'll flash it on the screen for you. So that is the amount of grapes that I decided that I would force myself to eat. Even if I had reached satiety already, I wanted to keep going and eat just way too much and see what my blood sugar response is as a fruitarian of more than three years now. So the first thing we do is we take our resting blood sugar level. So this is in the morning without having any food or uh, I don't even think I had water yet um, when I took this uh, blood sugar reading, but definitely no food, that's for sure. Okay. All right, so here we go. We are about to take our take our first little reading here. Okay, 4.7. My resting blood sugar came out to 4.7 millimoles per liter, which equals 84.6 uh, milligrams per deciliter, depending on which uh, system or which metric you're using. Of course, this definitely falls in the range of people with normal blood sugar, uh, I think in the lower end of people with normal blood sugar, and it is out of the range of people with diabetes and out of the range of people with pre-diabetes as well. Now, something very interesting happened on this on this little test, and it, it shocked me too. So I took the next reading an hour after my meal of grapes, after an hour after I popped in the last grape in my mouth. And what I found was that one hour after my last grape from that big bowl, my blood sugar was actually lower than my resting blood sugar. This, I, I, I had to stare at the screen for a second. I'm like, what? <laughs> it's almost as if the insulin in my body were just waiting at the gates like dogs, like, you know, just like waiting to get at whatever sugar could possibly be coming next. You're just like anxious. And then as soon as the grape sugar went, went into my body, they were like, yeah, yeah, yeah! Pounced on that sugar and just shuttled it right into the cells, like right away. <laughs> anyway, I'm just, I'm just having some fun. But my blood sugar was actually uh, lower than my resting blood sugar. 4.3 millimoles per liter is the same as about 77 milligrams per deciliter. So once again, this falls well within the normal range 
not pre-diabetic, not diabetic. So far, we're looking, we're looking quite good. So one important thing that I remembered after I took these tests is that uh, at around, I don't know, 40 minutes or so af after finishing my grape meal, I did take like an eight second run down to the garbage room. And then I, uh, and then I ran back up the stairs and back to my room for another 10 seconds or so. So I, I didn't exercise, but yes, I did run to the garbage room and then back up. Now, whether that accounts for the low blood sugar at my first reading, I, I don't know. I mean, it doesn't seem like much quote unquote exercise, but, and I know that um, actual exercise, yes, does in fact help to shuttle blood sugar into the cells post meal. But I didn't imagine that such a very short bout of moderate jogging really would have any significant effect, but it may have. So that may account for the uh, lower blood sugar at one hour. Even still, that's that's pretty cool. I mean, that's such a minimal dose of, of movement to have a very good blood sugar response. Um, then we have two hours after the meal and at the two hour mark, I measured my blood once again and we came up with 5.1 millimoles per liter, which equals 91 milligrams per deciliter, depending on which metric you're using. A 5.1 millimoles per liter blood sugar level puts me at a place that my blood sugar two hours after this meal falls within the range of people with diabetes before eating a meal. So when diabetics measure their fasting blood sugar, the range that that's said to be is uh, where my blood sugar falls after a meal. Right. So this is, you know, these are these are measures of very, very normal, very strong glucose responses. I'll flash some charts on the screen for you. You can also Google this and take a look and find uh, what average blood sugar levels are supposed to be for people with out diabetes for people with diabetes. You can compare these numbers if, if you want to check me on this. Feel free. I'll post some some pictures and charts for you, though. Uh, but yeah, you know, three years down the road, eating lots and lots and lots of fruit, my body is not weakening under the influence of glucose and fruit sugar. My body's ability to deal with the sugar is not only not getting worse, it is actually getting stronger. It's like physical training. The more you do push-ups, the better you will get at doing push-ups. It doesn't make sense that if you train push-ups all the time that you progressively get weaker and weaker and weaker until you have a neuromuscular disease. That's not how exercise works. The more you do it, the better you get, right? And when you get to a very, very high level, then that level is maintained with the same amount of, of work, right? It's the same thing with eating naturally, right? And eating, you know, human food, fruits, and sometimes vegetables if desired, right? Nuts if, if desired from time to time, but primarily fruits. Your, your body gets brutally efficient at dealing with the blood sugar, right? It's not, it does, has nothing, absolutely nothing to do with disease or diabetes. This is such nonsense and it's, it, it hurts when, when I hear these fools talking about blood sugar causing diabetes and what, what are you talking about? So there you have it, another blood sugar experiment for you guys to digest. Share this video with anyone who's promulgating the stupid notion of blood sugar causing diabetes, you know, put them in their place, fruitarian of three years plus now, and literally a truckload of grapes and sugar, right? It's, it's, I mean, there's so much more to fruit than sugar as it's very irresponsibly labeled these days. But yeah, you know, a truckload of grapes and my blood sugar didn't even, you know, it didn't even take a hit, right? So my body is responding perfectly fine. Don't be scared of fruits. They're healing, they're detoxing, they're hydrating. Even for people with type two diabetes, particularly type one is slightly different. I'm not gonna get into it because it's not the point but uh, of this video. But yeah, type two diabetics can can actually heal their conditions with with fruit diets, you know, um, regulated in, a, in an appropriate way. But uh, anyway, if that's something you wanna know more about, we can, we can talk about that later. But for now, yeah, thanks a lot for hearing me. Uh, I'm Eli, and we will see you next time on the Free Melon Society. Later, guys.